What is up, guys? I do apologize for the uh, the huge delay on uh, Thought Factory. I kind of been busy, but anyways, welcome to an episode of Thought Factory. This is where I watch Star Citizen, uh, uh, Inside Star Citizen, for the first time, and I tell you my thoughts and opinions. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. Trying to get caught up. This is an older episode, so I haven't As seen the team, it. will always wanted to make the derelict more enjoyable and fun for the player. The new addition of the planetary nav mesh makes the like, designer able to put uh, life on the location. Before, it was just kind of a ship just there on the ground, but what we wanted to do is to create a link between the ship and the environment around. Nantes. They decided to make them more like a settlement, to have like more story around them. It's like walking in the woods and just... It's it's absolutely beautiful. Um, first of all, I gotta, I gotta go ahead and say that. Um, I, I wonder, it makes me wonder in the future when uh, players crash, um, when they when they crash onto the ground, excuse me, those are my, my uh, geese, you'll probably hear them. Anyways, when they crash onto the ground, um, they mentioned something about playing with vegetation growing up on the wreckage and stuff like that. Um... You know, that would be really awesome, uh, especially if, like, players can cause, uh, you know, deformation kind of, you know, to a certain extent uh, to the planet. So, like, when you're coming in, you're crash landing, you're you're breaking trees off, you're breaking limbs off, stuff like that, and then you create a path uh, landing because, you know, I already know about the crash sites. But this is beautiful. The vegetation is beautiful. Again, maybe in the future they'll have it aware if you crash somewhere and it's never discovered, uh, maybe vegetation will grow on it. That'll be awesome. It's like walking in the woods and just sometimes you just found their old cards all rusty there with the leaves and the trees all around. That's the kind of feeling we wanted to do with, with the Delirics. For us designers, a lot of opportunity to make the location more FPS friendly with cover more like a mission friendly so we can add uh, stuff on top of that when you will arrive at the sh at the crash you will see a big trail on the ground so if you yeah, look like behind that. the ship you will see all the big tree but in, in the trail all the trees will be small and we we're going to have just small rocks and grass i don't think they'll ever get to this point of you know players crashing and leaving this but I mean, you never know. They might, you know, that would be awesome. It's the purpose the ship was there. When you go back in the ship, because you will be able to go back in the ship, you will rediscover the ship as you were before, but in the older version. That tell a, a lot of story about uh, the old technology, kind of giving a second life to the ship. So like, we this is an older version of the Reclaimer. Uh, did I get that right? Is that what he said? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, so this is like the older version of the Reclaimer. Uh, this ain't like a, a new, newly modeled Reclaimer. Uh, but maybe they might go in there and, you know, remodel. The, obviously, they're always, um, you know, updating the interiors of ships. Like they'll eventually update the interior of the uh, Gemini Starfare uh, or just the Starfare. Um, they're going to upgrade that interior of it and it's going to be laid out different from what i understand an update on the planetary nav mesh now on the planet so we are allowed to put ai on the ground putting npc in this location that are park air trying to take the best of the location scavenging for resources so when you will arrive there you will feel then some people living there since a long time that's going to give you a feeling that all that place around is just kind of habitated by some people. The mission we're going to do on those ships, if it's a hostile mission, we're going to have some kind of faction there. It's living there, we'll just to take control of the ship. And it's not a hostile mission, there's going to be a different kind of faction. We see all the feedback we receive on January when we start like showing the concept of the derelict settlement. 
with the EI team for the planetary nav mesh and uh, all the team in uh, Turbulent. Was so you can tell this person right here is look, he's using some kind of uh, head tracking or IR. That's what it looks like to me. Um, he was really good at looking there. Um, so that, yeah, that was pretty cool. Able to like uh, create uh, habitation module. We have tools now to be able to generate and procedurally place all this work on the planet. Mm -hmm. Just the beginning of the long term plan that we have in mind to populate and uh, add more and more location uh, in the PU. And uh, I'm super proud of my team to do it. And that with the design team, the art team, we worked super hard. Pretty proud of that. And I'm sure then people will enjoy it. Thanks, guys. <laughs> The new inhabited derelict settlement for 317.2 is not the only one uh, that will be present in this patch. We will let the player discover them and uh, find them uh, in the universe. The crashed reclaimer derelict settlements are just one of the new mission-enabled, gameplay-focused environments from Turbulent arriving in the upcoming Alpha 317.2. And we encourage you to explore the stand system and find additional ones on your own. Hint, some of them are still floating out in space. And when you're done exploring, the fine citizens of Orizon will need your help when the newest dynamic event pits the dreaded Ninetales against Crusader's security forces. Now, while we'd prefer you discover most of the details for yourself on the PTU and live servers, we do have a brief introduction to perhaps the biggest and most elaborate mission in Star Citizen yet. Now this is the uh, Siege of Orson, which has already happened and I think it's still going on at the time of this video. Uh, but this is what he's going to talk about. Most of you already kind of went through this, or a lot of you probably have. I haven't experienced still yet. Um, I'm To be honest, I'm not real interested in these kind of events. I'm more interested in the, like events like Jump Town. Uh, but these are not the most uh, attractive events to me. Siege of Orison is an event where we take away all of your most overpowered toys, which are your ships, but you actually have to use your reactions and your guns and your teammates to hopefully survive this peril. Um, I think this is cool that they, they try to take your ships away. They're kind of more oriented to, to, to first person shooting, but to me, it's kind of stupid as well. It doesn't make any sense to me to take your ships away. Um, I get it. Siege of Orson has taken out, or the, the Ninetales have taken over, you know, the, they hacked the system, the anti-air system or whatnot. Um, but I think it's like you ride here on a shuttle. So, like, basically a small little shuttle ship brings you over here. And to me, you know, if Ninetales took over this certain place, you know, why would they leave a little shuttle ship over here? It's almost like a Disney ride. You know, you get into the Disney ride and you, you get into the, the little ride that you're, you're sitting in and they, you know, bring the thing down and buckle you in. And um, you're kind of, you know, going through it while you're while you're looking. Obviously, you're interacting through it on this one. And some Disney rides you can interact on. But it, that's what it feels like to me. It, it makes no sense. Um, to me, I think if Ninetales were that sophisticated to hack into the anti-air system, they're going to keep shuttles from coming over here. I mean... You know they're not they're not gonna let shuttles come over here the entire air system's gonna target the shuttles and blow up especially if you can't get ships over here so to me that was they should have had some other way of getting over here besides the shuttle i mean i understand this is a work in progress but it, you know that's kind of my pet peeve that's why i never really got into it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me perilous encounter we wanted to do what for fps combat we did for ship combat with Xenofret, push it to its extremes. So without spoiling the event, uh, the Siege of Horizon is a dynamic event which takes place around Horizon on some floating platforms owned is it by Orson Crusader. Or and, Horizon? You know, we shuttle players in to help out Crusader take back their islands. 
When we was making the mission, we wanted to, I mean, first of all, we wanted to make a, a fun mission that pulled people in together to play together. You know, experience something they might not have normally. In most missions, you go up against 10 AI and you really don't get challenged. A lot of our missions do a lot of hand holding where we mark everything for the player and, you know, they can sort of disengage to a level and just like walk to a marker and, you know, presume. I don't like the hand holding missions. Um, I don't like the missions that tell you exactly where to go. I like missions that kind of give you a, an area to go to and you got to kind of figure it out. You kind of you use your head uh, with what information you got. I hate the markers where go here and pick this box up. And take, you know, it, it, I, I don't like those. I, I like more of the free range type, you know, missions. But some people... You know, they, they just don't have the patience for that. They want everything marked to where they have to go. And, you know, it's just how it is. And the rest of it. This one I wanted to kind of go, right, here's no markers. Now think and try to figure it out for yourself. Exactly, yeah. The event is primarily a PvE mission. There are systems in place to discourage PvP. It's not something we protect against because we want the players to protect themselves from it. We're not discouraging it, but we're not actively supporting it yet. That one guy before said something about he had systems in place to discourage it. And then this guy says that they're not discouraging it, but they're not, you know, supporting it. Conflicting information. There's a lot of new spaces we've made for us in, and working with design on, on the block out and still making sure it's all in keep. You know, I look at this and again, I'm going to pause throughout the video. So I look at this and could you imagine, you know, if an org could buy something like this? I mean, you got to think from what I understand, Crusader is the size of Earth. I mean, that's, you know, obviously it's supposed to be a gas giant, but it's actually the size of Earth, if you, you know, in real comparison. So they have a lot of real estate. Um, and could you imagine, you know, if they put these little structures out here, or these big structures, and they had it to where, like, orgs could buy them, you know, and, and, and this could be, like, you know, operation, a base of operations for an org or, or whatever. That would be awesome. Like, this structure right here would be awesome. Uh, it would be awesome to do it in other places such as Art Corp as well. Uh, this is what I picture. That's what I envision. And I think that that would be amazing. Keeping with, with what Orison is, we look to... See, these little shuttles right here. Let me go back. This shuttle right here. Again, Nine Tails, if they took over the, the anti-air system, why would, why would they let anything get close? You know, why wouldn't they just blow that shuttle out of the sky? You know, it, it just, it doesn't feel right to me. It doesn't feel immersive. It, it just, it feels like it's, you know, scripted. And I don't like any mission that feels scripted, especially in a world where you're supposed to be immersed in it. We're making sure it's all in keeping with, with what Orison is. We look to expanding the visual library of Horizon. That's beautiful. What we really like is the contrast of this this kind of idyllic, you know, relaxing garden platforms floating around and, and this kind of battle scarred, you know, damage and things like that adding to them. So it, it, was, a, it was a lovely kind of contrast to put in. We don't normally have content of this scale. The main challenge or the main challenges were performance by moving it far enough away from like this is odd this is a docking collar um i know they kind of just threw some stuff together but you know while you know well, it doesn't make no sense to me why a docking collar would be right here unless maybe this platform you know unless maybe this platform was somehow uh, shifted over to here and this was used as a bridge that's all i can think of that that's a little odd placement the center of the city of Horizon, we managed to um, avoid most of that. You know, having this here helped to improve and push performance because we found issues and we was able to quickly fix them. The experience I hope players get is enjoyment, mostly. I want players to feel fun and create like emergent stories with their friends that they can, you know, tell on Reddit or 
through videos and whatever just have fun really I, I want them to see all the effort that has gone into like healing and gunplay and ai over the years that you may not notice fighting against a small amount of people events in general are great because they pull people who might not play with each other together you all feel like this comrade ship trying to push forward against this enemy that you all have in common it's an experience unlike any other in this game So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that those fantastic derelict concepts we showcased earlier this year are already making their way to the Persistent Universe, and that they're coming along with new missions and gameplay made possible by the new dynamic planetary nav mesh, and that the Siege of Orison is the next big step forward towards bringing additional gameplay to Star Citizen's existing landing zones. Now, don't forget, there are a number of contests going on for both Alien Week and our upcoming Battle of the Bricks, which will see the community teams from both Star Citizen and EVE Online come together in a live stream on July 22nd to raise money for charity. You can learn all about both of those things on the robertspaceindustries.com website. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. This is the very noisy ninth floor of the Manchester Goods Yard building, soon to be home for our Manchester studio. And what, what goes in the center here where all this noise is? Huh. It's going to be something to see when the time comes. We'll see you all next week. Thank you, Jared. Thank you. So, guys, thank you for joining me. And, uh, you know, please come join our Discord. Come chat with us. Uh, all the links will be in, you know, the description below. Uh, we would love to have you. You guys have a good one. Safe, uh, stay safe nights. <laughs>